All righty. This morning, Jesus is about two-thirds of the way through the Sermon on the Mount. But because of the way our Sundays fall this year, uh, this is our last Sunday to talk about it. So if you want to read some more, there is more to the Sermon on the Mount. Um, the first Sunday talked about the Beatitudes and all those folks who are blessed, even though it doesn't sound like they are in a good situation, like grieving. Got an interesting connection this morning. Ron, would you prefer I go back to the pulpit? No? <laughs> we'll just wait. We talked about the blessed are those who are mourning. Well, I don't know about you, but I would prefer not mourn, even if you are blessed. We have ignore, but we can't. They are part of our lives. And God reminded us that he will happens for good. Next week will be the transfiguration. And then the Sunday after that will put us into Lent. Happy Easter. Yes. We will be doing a series during Lent that talks about how we, how we gain in our relationship with God as we go through the wilderness times in our life. Through tragedy, <laughs> we will be blessed. <laughs> Let's see. Two weeks ago, we talked about the Beatitudes. That's where I start. It's kind of hard to keep my train of thought with me. Um, as we talked about those who are blessed. Last week, we talked about being the salt and the light of the earth, and that that meant being some of those things that the Beatitudes talked about, how we deal with them as Christians, as part of our witness. So now today... Jesus picks up some of the old laws from the Old Testament, some things from the Ten Commandments. You know, you thought you were doing pretty well, but I tell you, I was pretty comfortable with the fact I had not murdered anybody. <laughs> but <laughs> then Jesus says, but I tell you, you have been angry with someone you have committed sin. Now, a perfect stretch for this week, you know. How many of you have been angry with someone this week? And how many? Years? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. It is easy to be angry with someone if you have driven on the expressway or you have walked through a grocery store or whatever the situation may be. Those of you who live with another person probably have found some reason to be angry this week. Part of our human nature, unfortunately. And God says, you have violated the spirit Law. The law said, don't murder. Our old translation said, don't kill. But the exception in times of war or for capital punishment. So our better translation is do not murder. Because that comes out of our anger. And Jesus reminds us that if we think about it, we are guilty because it will lead to us doing it. Carol, got anybody you want to murder? <laughs> it, it, it's kind of, there's a list. Yes. Yeah. And yes, we, we know how that is. We know what anger is. You know what? Jesus was also angry. Was he not? But this was perfect. What's the difference? What was Jesus angry about? The money changers, the misuse of the temple, the insult to God. 
Do you ever remember Jesus being angry over what someone said to or about him? He wasn't willing to get angry over what you said about him. But if you do something wrong to God, there is a righteous anger. I always kind of laughed when a few years ago it was the WWJD bracelets and pins and all that Jesus do. And you think, well, we usually picture Jesus being very quiet and mild. That's not how he was in the temple that day. When you tip over the, ta the tables, let the animals all loose and chase the people out with a whip. That's not exactly meek, mild, and calm, is it? It's kind of got there a little bit. So when you say, what would Jesus do? Chasing people with the whip is within the realm of possibilities. Just remember that. Hmm. How many of you ever did the limbo in your younger years? Mm hmm how many of you ever did the high jump? There's a few. Well, no, the geriatric limbo isn't that exciting, but nonetheless, we're about five feet's the limit, right? Jesus had lowered that bar, or if you're doing the high jump, he's raised it. Because you thought you were doing good because you hadn't slept with someone else's spouse and you hadn't killed anyone this week. And all of a sudden, Jesus says, You can't be looking at someone with the wrong thoughts, or even be angry with them, or you are guilty of those sins. Boy, Jesus makes it tough, doesn't he? We know we can't look to the letter of the law, and then he is inspired by the spirit of the law, if you are my followers. Now, the letter of the law may say you can murder. That's for Spirit of the law, that's when you take it to your heart and you know it applies to you. There's a difference there. The letter of the law may be and check off, I've done this or I've done that. But the spirit of the law is what lives with us and makes us make certain decisions throughout our day. The Old Testament gave us many commandments to remind us we aren't perfect. And Jesus says, even if you think you're doing pretty good, it's not good enough. And that's not to be discouraging. It's simply the first step in salvation. Remember the ABCs that are on the back of our business card? I use them a lot. We admit we're not perfect is the A. So all of you who raised your hand for being angry, you understand that well. We're not perfect. But we do be, believe that Jesus is God's son and that he chose to die for us and rose again. So that C, we could commit our lives to following Jesus by serving others. ABCs are pretty simple, but the first step it's to realize we are not perfect. Now, if you live with someone else especially, you already know that. <laughs> Remember from Jeremiah, God's, I will write my instructions on their hearts and they will be my people. That's when we have it internalized. We know God is talking to us. The interesting part of all of these, what Jesus has is important, is our relationship with God and with one another. He didn't say, I don't care if you murder people, because it still stands. But what he said is, I'm concerned about your relationship with one another. You shouldn't be angry with one another. He did not say, you are free to commit, although some Bible that way. What he did say, 
even if you have that thought in your mind, you are guilty of the sin. Binds us, we are not perfect, but we can be forgiven. And that is the difference. For us as Christians, we understand our faults. If you don't, someone will be glad to point them out for you, I'm sure. We're really good at that. I can see your faults a lot better than mine. And sometimes to remind us of what some of those are. But no matter what they are or how often we have that same problem, we can be forgiven if we truly repent. Now, there's an old church word, but what does that mean? It means we change the way we live because we change our hearts. The common English puts it, we change our hearts and lives. So if we truly are willing to do that with God's help, we can always be forgiven. We're coming up to Lent. It does not seem possible. Carol is frantic, frantically typing. How many days in are you, Carol? Four. There's only 40 days in Lent, so she's getting there. <laughs> As we come to Lent, it asks us to think about where are we as individuals and our relationship with God? I don't believe that God cares if you give up chocolate for Lent. I think God does care if you're spending time with him and working on your heart to be in a closer relationship with him. Now, we might give up some of our electronics time and some face-to-face with our neighbors, with a friend. We might volunteer somewhere. We can find things to begin new habits as well as end some of the bad habits. And Lent is kind of a time where a lot of people along those lines. So you might want to give that some thought before we get to Lent. What are you giving up? Or what are you starting as a new habit? can be an appropriate time. Lent is just to ingrain a new habit or help get rid of an old one. God looks at our heart. That's the thing that is different about relationship with God and our relationship with others. You have no idea what I am thinking. Well, maybe. I'm sorry if you do. <laughs> Cindy has gotten so she can usually read my friends. She, she knows pretty well. God knows what we think we have hidden. We may be angry with someone and be just as nice and polite to them. God knows we God knows when we are hurt. God knows when we want to hurt others in return. We really wish I'm the golden rule was not do unto others as you would have them do unto you. We do unto them as they have done unto us. Mm -hmm. We'd like to have the last word, wouldn't we? And that's one of those one of those things that is just part of our human nature. As we come closer to general conference and the unknown of our denomination. I was reminded here him talks about but schisms rent asunder. If that's not a good phrase for the United Methodist Church right now, I don't think God looked at our heart, not just our actions. We may disagree strongly with one another over various issues, not just ones separating the United Methodist Church. But it does not mean that we are allowed to hate or disrespect those who disagree with us. 
We are called to be loving people, to be an example to others that despite disagreements, we can love one another. That's going to be very trying. The next while for the United Methodist Church is going to be even less comfortable than what we have been through in the past couple of years. At annual conference and general conference, we have huge decisions to make that will affect all of us. I urge you to pray for general conference, especially. But also pray not only for the decisions that are made, but that we may be an example to others of our love in Christ. And have not been exactly loving. In fact, they have been opposite. What the United Methodist Church needs to do as our legacy, if nothing else, is to end I note that even when we disagree, we can love one another. God knows no two of us agree on doesn't mean we can't love each other and work together. And I think that would be a powerful witness for our church to be able to do that. So as you think about coming up to Lent, and you think about how Jesus has taken these don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't swear by God or by even by yourself, just be honest and say yes is yes and no is no. We have a lot to work on as individuals, as a church, and as a denomination. It will be interesting times, so hang on for the ride. You may wish your pews had seat belts by the time this is all said and done. But you know what? God is still in control. And even though the United Methodist Church is governed by elected delegates, and we may not always have the best understanding of the Bible. In fact, I think sometimes United Methodism disagrees with the Bible. Sorry, I said that on tape, didn't I? Don't show Nancy. She'd agree as well, I'm sure. Despite all of those things, God has a plan for you and for this church. God has a plan for my life in this church, hopefully for a long time. But no matter what happens, God's will will be done. Pray that. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It will be. God, all-powerful and all-knowing, he already knows how this is going to work out. So if you're walking with him, no fear. Let's pray. Oh God, we take some of these commandments and we think we are good. Or at least we know we are better than some people. And then Jesus says, But help us to learn from you. Help us follow the ABCs and truly commit our lives to following Jesus and serving others. God, guide us in your path that whatever our decisions and those of Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would you receive our benediction? You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others that seeing your justice, mercy, and compassion, they may give glory to God in heaven. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.